Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to day eight of the vlogs. Uh, we are at Kennedy Space Center today. Uh, we've come out uh, on a nice drive here out in the country. Um, so yeah, we've we'll come out here uh, to see all the rockets because space is one of my uh, favorite things. I, I know quite a lot about space. So yeah, this is today's vlog. So we are now in Kennedy Space Center. Um, this is the first time we've been here. So, uh, I'm yeah, and to... I am excited, very, very excited. As Jack said, I'm not interested, but I am interested. So, I've yeah. Seen... So, this bit here is a quote what J.F. Kennedy stated when the moon landing was happening. So we're just waiting to go into the Kennedy Space Center. It's not open yet, um, as you can see here. Explorer. No, but we have to get up and make sure we're not sure if we've got locker room, we? So we're now in uh, Kennedy Space Center. we are just entered the rocket garden. I know that sounds like a euphemism, uh, but look, this is massive. This is a big rocket. Um, there's loads of rockets in there. Let me take one of Jack. Ugh. Right, Dad's gonna try and get into this spaceship thing, or whatever it's called. Let me take the camera then. Right, try and get in there then, Dad. Take your back. Remember, it's upside down, so you gotta get in there laying down. Oh. Hold that, Mum. No, you're in the wrong way. Yeah, you are. You've got to face the other way. Turn round. <laughs> and then put your feet up there. You've got to put your feet up. There you go. <laughs> That's what you're sitting. Oh, you've got to lay down a bit more. You're not even on the seat. You've got to sit like that and then lay down. What, Yeah. Have you taken him? There's mum in there. Wave, mum. So we're in the rocket garden at the moment, we're looking at all the rockets which have actually been in space. So this one here, uh, <coughs> that rocket's been in space, and this one here, which is like taller than Dan, I'm going to walk, I'll walk you the length of this rocket, you ready? This is one big rocket here. No euphemism. So, this is what has been in space. This rocket there, this one behind me, has been in space. All these rockets here have been in space, which is really cool to see this. And it's the proper stuff, it's not like no fake museum stuff. So this is what it looks like at the end of it. You've got a nose cone and all that. Uh, this is all what it looks like. Now, <coughs> this over here is what is connected to the nose cone where the astronauts sit uh, to get blasted up into space. Uh, so let's go and have a look. So this is what the Apollo astronauts would have to sit in uh, when they go up to space. Free abreast and it is quite small. So this is what the astronauts would have seen. So this is how the astronauts would have sat in the Apollo rocket waiting to be blasted off. Laying down. And all this, this is all the instruments what they've got to look at and use. Where's the master alarm? <laughs> the Did you get there? Did you? There's a computer there the roll and the pitch and all this, this is the acceleration yeah, and G's, uh, the rockets, these are the Let five rocket boosters, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, and it would show that, where's the master alarm? Yeah, you better take me your photo then. There's one trying to get in. Right. right, now we're vlogging, we're sitting together in a rocket launcher, okay, me and Jack, hi. 
and all that. Like, I'm upside down in a rocket. Now I'm feeling giddy. So we're going in a na nature and a technology yeah. centre. And you need to vlog while we're here. Up. Right, start here. So this is just how it all started. Okay. Yeah, what? There's one here. I know. Oh. Oh. So we're just having a look at everything and NASA started. This is Here. So, uh, this never used to, uh, before this land was uh, owned by the military, it used to be just thing. This is some of the stuff they, sh they found on this land when they bought it. Now this is a proper real old school century gun. This is what someone would wear from 1880. So this is all the toys they used to play with in this year. No Xbox or phones in those times. No nothing. And here we go, this is another bit, what they found. What they used to have in the 1880s. Uh, this used to be all of it. Pots and pans I used to use while cooking. Candlestick. So this is showing what animals are actually on the island where this uh, space centre is uh, situated. So there is a heron, uh, alligator. Now I do believe that alligator is fake. I don't want to touch it just in case. But yeah, alligator, ducks. So, yeah. So this is what all animals are on here because it's a natural wildlife preserve. Um, they can't remove any of the animals or anything. They can't do anything with them. They're just here. So there's animals roaming about everywhere. Obviously not crocodiles and all that, or alligators. But yeah, they're all roaming about as it's nature. They can't move them. They were here before us, so they're staying. And if you're very lucky, you get to see one of these flying about in the air. That there is a bold eagle. And they're flying about outside. But they're very rare to spot. So the International Space Station, which is that, has all these nationalities up there who go up there. So I'll hang you around. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Norway, Russia, Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, Switzerland, United Kingdom, United States. So that is all the nationalities, all the countries what I've been, which do go to the um, ISS, which is International Space Station. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. So we're just waiting in line now to get onto the Space Centre tour to go around the whole site. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on there. Let's see. So on there is where all the space on that map is where we will be going. So. Um, Enjoy. So we are now on the bus, we're so just waiting for the bus to go. Um, it's all starting uh, out there. Nice sunny weather today, so yeah, it's got a bit of a red nose still. Find it on maps dating back as far as 1564. It's the second oldest place name in the United States, it's and it's second it's only to Florida. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Nancy.
NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center. From launching the first Americans into space to launching humans to the moon, we've launched and carried the dreams of a nation. None of it would have been possible without the tremendous team that people are thinking one thing in that little brain of his, Beagles on wheels. You can't feed gators in Florida. Don't do that. Gators have been hand fed since they're babies. They lose their fear, become extremely dangerous. Do not feed alligators in Florida. Let them stay wild. Yeah. Big lifting devices in this building. It's a 325-ton lifting hook is the largest. Now the operators that operate that hook, they have to pass one little test. Lower it from the top of that building all the way down to the ground floor. Set it on top of a rolled egg. Don't crack the shell. You'd pass the test. Crack the shell. You're going to take that test over. So the building is 525 feet tall, 716 feet long, 518 feet wide, and it covers approximately 8 acres of ground. Well, there's 129,428,000 cubic foot of space inside this building. So big, you could put the Pentagon in there, have room left over. So big, you could put the Empire State Building by volume, not by height, by volume, inside this building three and three quarter times. On the east side and the west side of this building, you're looking at the... T Check that out. <laughs> I used to have to do that when I worked there. Only in Florida, the southern tip of Florida, will you find the crocodiles. The only state in the Union that has both the American alligator and the American crocodile living together in the one. Crawler transporter over there, one of two. That's Franz. You're going to see Hans later on doing the tour. All the launch vehicles that were assembled in that big building were rolled out to one of these two launch pads at one of those two crawler transporters. Now we rolled out a big moon rocket to clear the top of the door up there by six feet. Those vertical doors, there's seven of them, they're 76 feet wide and they weigh 32 tons apiece. Here's the way it would work. One of the two crawler transporters would drive up underneath one of these three MLPs. This is an MLP. Here we go with those acronyms. Mobile Launch Platform. It's one of three, it weighs 8.2 million pounds, and it's sitting on six pedestals 22 feet above the ground. See the cutout close to the bus? That's where the three main engines of the orbiter exhaust through that mobile launch platform into the flame trench at the time of the launch. Not here, out at one of our two launch pads. The cutouts back right and left, that's where your SRBs, your solid rocket boosters, would exhaust through the mobile launch platform into the flame trench. So one of the two crawler transporters would drive up underneath that mobile launch platform. It is mobile. It weighs 8.2 million pounds, and yes, it is mobile. Lift it up, take it in that big building, set it on six pedestals, back out of the way. In past years, we would assemble a big moon rocket or space shuttle on one of our three MLPs, mobile launch platforms. Time to go to the launch pad, 30 days before launch. We'd go in, lift it up, slow roll out to the launch pad at about a half a mile an hour. Now the solid rocket booster segments would arrive here on a train from Brigham City, Utah. Utah. We're storming these buildings over here to the left. They call the Rotation Processing Surge Facility, RPSF. NASA loves acronyms. Got a whole book full of them. VAB stands for Vehicle Assembly Building, LCC Launch Control Center, SRB Solid Rocket Booster, MLP, that's a mobile launch platform. And right now the BUS and TOM is your tourist coordinates. I got a chuckle and a half out of that. I do that to see if you're paying attention. One lady was really paying attention because she caught it. Those last two weren't acronyms. T-O-M and B-U-S are not acronyms. But don't worry about it if you have a straw hat on. You need your hat. Because he don't get too much sun on his nose inside that cab. But anyhow, that's what that's works. The railroad track and chain link fence. How good is that? I'll give you some ideas. Level up your property before you build that dream home. We did. We took it on the mud. Came up with different layers of hydraulic field, compact field, limestone. The top 5 to 10 inches, Alabama River Rock. Comes from the Tennessee River that flows through Alabama. We give both Tennessee and Alabama credit for this non-sparking river rock. 40 foot of gravel. 50 foot, 50 foot of building just to the right called the VIB, Vertical Integration Building. 
There's Pat Forty, those four towers. They're working. They got a crane over there. He's working, cleaning it up. There's Pat 37B. That's where your Delta Fours lead from. 37A never was built. Now the Delta Four is horizontally integrated, the building close to the launch pad. You can't see it from here. I've seen it many times, taking VIP tours over there. But the Delta Four is horizontally integrated in the HIF, H-I-F, Horizontal Integration Facility, as one of the flattest floors in the world. Now everybody on the driver's side of the bus, you'll get the first photo off on the return trip from Pad B. Everybody on the passenger side of the bus will get an equal photo opportunity. Now you're looking at two different units here, a crawler transporter on the bottom, a mobile launch platform on top. These two crawler transporters were originally built in Marion, Ohio, by Marion Power Shovel Company. They weigh six million pounds apiece. Eight different tracks, 57. They divert the flame down into the flame trench. That's what 7.3 million pounds of space shuttle exhaust does to those upper flame deflectors. That's a uh, blade and increasing actual mission time by years. So we've just gotten off the bus tour at the Santa uh, Santa. Uh, we're just waiting to go in now. Uh, this is where all the Apollo missions um, and all the uh, sends are ready. And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, why the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. <laughs> It's the underside and it goes all the way down there. This is the underside of the sound fire rocket. There. Let me turn your side down. There we go. This rocket has actually been in space. So this behind me is a moon buggy. Uh, there is one actually on Mars, uh, not Mars, uh, the moon. So yeah. That, let me show you the front. 
front of it. Yeah, so this satchel space with the actual moon dust in it. If you look on the floor, there's little gaps there and on the shins. It's got moon dust on it. So we are now sat on an official NASA watch out platform when they, the shuttles go off. Over there on, let me get that viewed in, oh, on... Actually, these would be the closest then, you can see it then. Yeah, you can't sit too far. On that... What well, have got many people then, be invited then? There's some more down there. Oh, is there? So on launch pad 39A there is an actual rocket on there waiting to go up into space tonight. 34, 39B is uh, over there. Uh, but this is a lookout when you want to come and watch um, a space shuttle launch or a rocket. You do have to be invited, you can't just turn up, uh, which is good. Right, so we have made it to the end of the rocket. Right down there is the start of the rocket. It's in stages, so this is the service module bit and the command module, so where the astronauts sit. So if you look at it, if you look, that whole rocket is just for like a This little bit at the end, this little bit here, and all of that is just a rocket. And three people stay in there for about 14 days or so. This is what it looks like when it's actually on the launch pad. So that is that thing that carries the rocket to the launch pad. And this is what it looks like. So you've got the service module all the way up to there, the service module up there, and then the nose tail. And this is a tower. So there's a lift in the middle of it, what goes from the bottom all the way up. And the astronauts get off up there, ready to go to space. So this is an actual lunar Apollo cockpit. There's the master alarm switch there. So this is what they used to walk out onto, onto the launch pad. This is what it used to look like, this is how it used to <coughs> So this here is actual moon rock, which is from the moon. So yeah, it touch it. yeah, it is. So that there is the actual Apollo 14 capsule. What's been in space? You can actually tell that. Look at all the damage on it, all the burns, all the burns, all the all the damages on it. That's actually been in space and actually orbited around the Earth and uh, been on, on, on the moon, or near the moon, I would say. And that's what it looks like inside. Let's see if I can zoom in. Pretty cool, huh? So that there is an in flight suit. So when they're in, uh, this is the actual flight suit of Jim Lovell, which you can see the name. Just there. So that's the actual flight suit for Jim Lovell, who the astronaut is, on Apollo 11. Mum wants to be in the vlog more, so I'll show you Mum. Huh? Oh hi, we're having a lovely time, we're in the space shop. Uh, Am I saying that right there? Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm in the space shop now. I'm just trying to find something for Jack's birthday. <laughs> he can have what he wants. 
so we are now in the Shuttle Atlantis building. We come back from the rocket building over the other side, the Saturn V rocket. So we are in here to have a look at the space shuttle and all this. Just walking up here. So we are now in the Shuttle Atlantis building. Let me turn around, as you can see. There it is. This one's made 33 missions in space and uh, returned safely. As you can see, this is a proper space shuttle, which is brilliant, uh, as you can see. So we've just gone in here. This is the people. This is a remembrance place where all the people uh, died in space. They've got the one from the Challenger. Uh, disaster as well. They've got a massive piece of the shuttle in there as well, which is quite uh, remarkable and it is a bit sad knowing that people on that shuttle did die, but um, as you look at it, the space race has improved over the years. So we're just sat in the memorial garden now for all the astronauts who have died in space. Uh, this is the memorial wall. It's quite a big one. It's nice and peaceful around here. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying today. It's a good, good day out. We might even go to the beach at the end of this. I'm not too sure though.